You remember when I said that there's a um, very specific time frames for certain checks um, and validity of those checks. That means security check last 15 months, um, interview with immigration officer is 15 months, biometrics 15 months. Um, I know for assurances we need to assure every case once a year in order for uh, our main office in New York to know that we still agree to accept the case. Um, medical clearance here is 90 days, but actually it's six months. Um, that means with everything else, when as a line, there is a 60-day travel window for refugees to travel. And if any of these checks expired, everything is thrown back to the phase one. After done with the um, medical checkup, then it's coming culture orientation. It's actually um, orientation sometimes it's given a week, sometimes a few hours, depending on the programs of how many staff is able to actually perform the orientation. That means orientation is given to clients about the country where they are um, going to um, and IOM, it's actually uh, International Organization for Migration, is the one that finance the travel. But before refugees go, they actually sign the contract with IOM telling that they are going to repay their loan for traveling. Um, this is a number of admission in Idaho from 2001 to 2011. Um, they were admitted less than 12,000 refugees. As you see, the, the numbers after September 11th were very small, and then the, it takes so much time for the program, I think, because it's so big to actually get momentum of moving. And every stop, it's at least six months stop in arrivals. This is a, a demographic of countries um, that are our clients, refugees coming to the United States, as you, to Idaho, and as you can see, the biggest is Congolese population. I mentioned that IOM um, arranged the travel of refugees. There are nine big volunteer or non-governmental agencies in the United States that have affiliate offices in different cities and different states that help with a resettlement process. Um, they are usually, uh, I think from nine, there are two or three that they are not faith-based um, and they were established long before the refugee program actually started existing in a law because um, people of faith were accepting strangers and helping them. Um, there are 350 affiliate offices um, in 49 states. I think only Wyoming is the one that does not have a refugee program. Um, Agency for New Americans is uh, affiliate office of Episcopal Migration Ministry, EMM. <laughs> um, this is about the travel law. <coughs> People sign the contract. They sometimes have interpreters during the signing. Um, some of them, they actually have um, translation of the document. <coughs> but believe me, going through that process, you actually don't know what I'm signing. 
you just want to go somewhere to be safe, to, um, and then when you come here, you realize, yeah, that's agreement, and you have to pay back. And especially for the families, that they're um, big families, their debt, it's several thousand dollars. Um, they have a 42 um, months to repay that loan. Um, every child over 18 years that arrives with a family, it's actually considered as a separate adult person. These are resettlement agencies in Idaho. There are two in Boise, Agency for New Americans and International Rescue Committee. We actually had a board relief agency that was closed um, as of May of this year due to cut in the funding. Um, I know our main office actually closed six of other affiliate offices of EMM. These are agency goals. Every agency in the whole resettlement program has the main goals for every family to become self-sufficient, specifically economically self-sufficient, as soon as possible. We are strength-based, um, even though we know that we are dealing with trauma, and for some clients, um, traumatic events that they went through are very hard to kind of overcome. Um, but we always try to find something that is um, strength in their, in their character, in their perseverance to come here. We are here actually to cheer them up and tell them that they can do it and we will be there to help them. But the whole process is very motivated actually for people to be able to support themselves. This is our little chart of um, programs that we have. That means when the client comes, usually the first person that um, meets them at the airport is a case manager. Case manager is a person that finds apartments, helps with scheduling all first appointments, um, uh, a registration for school, registration for English classes, um, applying for the food stamps and Medicaid. In the first two weeks, refugees have at least 10 to 15 meetings. <laughs> that means we really um, try to provide information as much as we can. We are pretty sure that they don't know the half of it after those two weeks because it's so much, but we are required by um, Department of State and ORR, federal founders, to actually um, have orientations and apply for our services within seven to ten days um, in order to be in compliance with the program. And we also know that um, probably all the information that we provide for our clients in the first two weeks, we will probably need to um, repeat so many more times because um, it's impossible to actually remember everything. <laughs> um, this is a little bit about the money. When a refugee arrives to the United States, um, the Department of State provides every refugee with a lump sum of $925. And actually, actually that's what is, is coming to the agency for the refugee. Um, they receive the pocket money, $30 if it's a single person, family of four and more, it's $120. Um, Everything else goes mainly for housing, applications, um, deposit, and rent. We have a list um, of the furniture that we have to provide to refugees, and it's very basic and it's very specific. Like, we need to provide one chair per person, 
one fork, one spoon, one knife, one plate, um, kitchen table, uh, bed, and one sitting space. That means if a single person arrives, they will probably get the armchair. If um, a couple arrives, they will probably receive a uh, love seat. And I know sometimes our clients desperately, maybe, you know, they have volunteers coming, they have somebody from the community comes and they say, we don't have enough chairs, but in the times when we have so many arrivals, we actually just stick to the things that we have to provide. And then if we have something extra, after um, arrivals and everything, when we are sure that everybody gets what they're supposed to get, we are able to give some extra. Donated um, items are actually donated to the clients. Um, they need to be in a decent condition. Um, I think recently, because of the Bug bags, uh, we actually uh, only bed bugs, sorry. <laughs> uh, we are not able to donate, use donated beds to our clients. We have to provide them uh, new beds. And actually, last year we um, received a great donation from um, LDS Church. They actually donated beds to our clients and that's enormous uh, saving because one bed is around $200.